John Keating. He began by teaching English. Now he's changing lives. I got the part! Tear out the entire introduction. Who put you up to it? Was it this new man, this uh, Mr. Keating? Are we just playing around out here? Or do we mean what we say? Vision, honor, discipline, rip, spread, tear. What is this dick poet society? I want names. This is a battle, a war. The casualties could be your hearts and souls. For the first time in my whole life, I know what I want to do. Medicine, law, business, engineering. These are noble pursuits. Poetry, romance, love. These are what we stay alive for. That's beautiful. Sit down, Mr. Anderson. Arbidius! Sit down! What the hell is going on here? Seize the day. Touchstone Pictures presents Robin Williams as John Keating. He was the inspiration that made their lives extraordinary. Dead Poet Society. Hello, I'm Thomas Carruthers. And I'm the Trini Unit. Trini Unit, let me tell you how good a friend I am. Well, no, not really. You're a good friend for doing these. But who's a good friend? Anyway, now, yesterday, I was uh, helping out my local cricket club. I was working a shift uh, from half four until probably about midnight, it looked like. And you said, can we bring it forward? Now, we were originally planned for one o'clock, which means that I could have woken up at eight and I could have lazily watched Dead Poets Society and woken up with Dead Poets Society. I had to now wake up at seven o'clock and immediately put the disc on. Oh, a whole hour early. I know. I But I finished work at half 12 and it was a rather raucous night. And uh, the minute that you messaged me was the minute that uh, the police arrived. So I know, tell me about it. So on six hours of sleep, I woke up uh, to... Uh, the wonderful Dead Poets Society. Um, I didn't know that you loved this movie. Well, I, I don't. This is a trick. I've never seen it before a couple, of, like the other month. Ah, oh, fair enough, fair enough. So, what's been, so what made you watch it uh, the other month? Flicking through I saw shit. A, I saw a clip of it on TikTok. Ah, what what's the TikTok? Do people, is there an Oh Captain My Captain dance that people do? Or? No, it, it, it was like an edit of like. Okay. Um, it, was, it... it was Neil. There's an edit of Neil. And. Um, Are these like these horny edits? Like, you know, they put a song in everyone's No, it like... wasn't. It was quite sad. It was quite sad. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> you know, Neil's quite a tragic character. So. Yeah. What was the song? It was like a month and a half ago. Time. I don't know. I don't know. Am I supposed to remember what, these things? What's the worst? I don't know. I don't know how I if worst is the right word. What's the most random or awkward TikTok edit or YouTube love love song edit that you've ever come across? What? Why would you spring this upon me? I don't. I don't know because I, I always remember. Gonna... Well, I didn't know we were going to be coming. It didn't know it was going to be coming up. I remember once when I was a kid. Um, and I was really getting into League of Gentlemen, and so League of Gentlemen was all in my YouTube algorithm. Mm. And somebody had made, like, and somebody had made like a sexy Reese Shearsmith uh, YouTube edit to The Cure. I see that, um, you know, on TikTok. They're on TikTok as well. Yeah, uh, but this one was to The Cure's Lullaby, and they kept using clips of him as Papa Lazarou um, <laughs> in when he's dressed up as Keith Drop or whatever in the third oh, yeah. in the third series. <laughs> Um, it was not, yeah, there is a lot on um, TikTok. There's a very yeah, Reece, there's a section of women that really do. Pants. Like Reese Shearsmith, right? Yeah, Reese is a Reese is a nice, attractive guy, I guess. Um, the Poet Society. So the first time you watched it was uh, yeah a month ago. So what was your what was your first reaction after being ingratiated by TikTok? I liked it. It would be if I didn't film. like it. That is true. That is true. What's a film that you don't like that you would like to rail into for an hour and a half? Because I don't think that's actually enjoyable. I mean, it is enjoyable, I guess. But it gets to a point always where it's not actually fun anymore. Wait, no, this is completely untrue. The podcast we did on Don't Worry Darling, the emergency podcast was very oh, fun. fun. That was that was fun. I'm not and seeing also, it. I don't want to see it. 
don't, don't. And also, I, I guess all, that, all I can gather from "Don't Worry, Darling" is that Florence Pugh was absolutely phenomenal. That's a stretch. Um, she was very <laughs> good. She's a like, she's a wonderful self. She's always in, like compared to everyone else. Well, yes, <laughs> Less, well. Although I'm, I imagine Chris Pine was pretty good as well. Chris Pine got a uh, shortlist uh, Thomas Carruthers Award uh, 2022 nomination. I don't at this point. I don't know whether he made it to the final five, but he did get a shortlist nomination. The thing is, I'd love to see Chris Pine and Florence Pugh in another film together. Oh, Gina, the best scene was them two in a ten minute dinner scene. You'll have probably seen a, a, a clip from yeah. the dinner scene. That's the best scene. But he, no, no, no. The best scene's the bit before in the kitchen where he's like, "I know what you're doing," and you're like, "Oh, this is wonderful. Two good actors." And then, and then it all falls apart. I'm doing this for us. I'm doing this for all of us. Yeah, great, terrible film. Um, cast fan cast Harry Styles in one of these roles. If this movie was made today, they would cast Harry Styles as Neil, and bloody Timothy no, Chalamet, I, no. Timothy Chalamet as Todd, Timothy Chalamet as Todd. I think Timothy Chalamet as Todd. I think uh, Harry Styles as Neil. Um, Lucas Dalton. Hedges, Lucas Hedges as um, uh, Nuanda as as um, Colin, not Colin. Yeah. What's his name? Is it one. Colin Dalton, Mister Dalton? No, Ding no, Mi no, Dalton, Charlie Dalton. Charlie no, Dalton. No, no, no. Lucas Hedges would be uh, would be not Clover Street. Absolutely. Oh, that's true. That is a good. That is the a good kid shout. From, the kid from it, you know the. Um, there are literally the six kids. <laughs> no, not the one who plays Eddie. He would be oh, young. He's in um, he's in placebo. Is it Eddie Eddie Casprax, the placebo kid, isn't he? The... Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was also in the the superhero one for DC. Brightburn, Shazam, oh, Shazam. He was also in Shazam. He was the best friend in Shazam. Oh, he's gone he down. Was... I think he would play Dalton. I haven't seen the new one, so I don't. I don't. I haven't even seen the old one. I just know that he's in it. What the it's? No, I've seen all the it's. All oh, right, yeah. The old one. Uh, yeah, this is a bad game because who would right? Okay, I actually have an answer for this because they did a play, Katrina, um, and so we'll talk about that later. They did a play about five years ago. Um, who would we cast as Keating? Because the secret saw the the. Secret potion of this film, of course, is that Robin is 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 our dear Robin. Is the hot take that this is actually a better performance than Goodwill Hunting? I think it is. Yeah, I was gonna like later. We're gonna talk, we're gonna talk about the Oscars in a minute, but I I be two very oh. comparable films in terms very, of his yeah. performance. But I think Keaton to me is. I'm just, oh. Let's talk about this now. So the first time I ever saw Dead Boys Society was in my uh, year nine. Yeah, it would have been year nine. Or would it have been year 11? Two very different years. <laughs> yeah, it was ten, with Miss... Absolutely not. Definitely no, not never, ten. Lived, never 10. It might have been... No, it was year 11 because it was finals. Uh, it was SATs, not SATs, GCSEs, you know, final. <laughs> Finals? What the hell is this? You know what was unnerving when they call it preparatory school in this? And I go, oh, is that what prep stands for? It's like, oh, yeah, yeah bizarre. That. No, I didn't know that. I only found out the other day that con man stood for confidence man. Well, you just taught me something new. I there didn't you know go. that. This is, we that need to make it. Sense. It does, does it? make sense. I don't know if it does make sense. It does, because you, you've you got to put confidence into Basically them. and make yeah. it. Yeah, and um, the uh, no, so yeah, so it was in it was in Mrs. Harrison's shack. Well, not really. It, it was one of those like you know, like new build porter cabin type one. Porter cabins, that's the word, isn't it? Yes, yeah, porter cabins. And yeah. she said, "You all need to watch Dead Poets Society." And she was a great teacher in many ways. She I, she wasn't a Keating. I'm not going to make this story. Was she nice. Kerry Boyle though? I was. I wanted to bring this up. We're going to bring up Kerry in a minute. We're going to bring up Kerry. We're gonna um, bring up we're gonna bring up one of my favorite women in my entire life. She's great. She's a wonderful woman. And Mrs. Harrison, and she literally was like, You all need to watch Dead Boys Society. And so 
But the only thing, she wasn't going to buy it on YouTube or anything like that. And she didn't have the DVD. And she wanted to watch it that day. I said, I have the DVD. I could bring it in. And of course I did. And, uh, but she wanted to watch it that day because of some lessons or sats or something. Anyway, but, so she found one of those like YouTube where somebody's uploaded it all onto YouTube, but they've got the huge like lights on it and, and, it, and they've cut the first five minutes and you know, like there's a like a big white line. Why not just it. why not just go on like one, two, three movies or something? I don't know. All I remember uh, is maybe is that maybe it's blocked on schools, I guess. Probably yeah. blocked on schools. I also remember when uh, we had uh, a support teacher, um a wonderful servant German support teacher, and she was trying to find a movie website and one of the lads said, uh, what about um xnxxx.com, which uh, was 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 a porno site. <laughs> Uh, she didn't. She didn't click on it. Uh, however, um, well, no, she would have found out when it came up and said. Well, no, it's not like she's German. X X X. That is the universal maybe, symbol for sex. The end threw her off. <laughs> the end. The end really maybe, maybe. <laughs> confused her. Um, but the moral of the story is is that it was free on YouTube. Somebody had uploaded it, and it was all like you know when like bits are sped up and all that sort of stuff. And it was the final ten minutes were cut off. No, it was worse than that. It was like, Mr. Keating, Mr. Keating, we had to sign it, we had to sign it. And then he was like, I understand, I understand. And then it cut off. It was ridiculous. So we then had to type into YouTube, Dead Poets Society final scene, and then watch the final scene separately. I know, very awkward. Let's talk about Kerry Boyle. I think, for lack of a better way to say it, your a love of Dead Poets Society is immensely fueled. Um, if you are so lucky, by the Keatings in your life, we both shared the same Keating. We, I, I've had a couple of Keatings, but we had a we both shared an English Keating, um, <laughs> teaching English. <laughs> I don't know uh, an English Keating named the wonderful Kerry Boyle, and we both wrote a lovely letter to her. Uh, we made her a hamper, yeah, made her a hamper, and she started reading it. I, I'll always remember this. She started reading it. And then she stopped reading it after one letter, after about thirty sec- about 20 seconds or so, and put it away. Now, I've always thought that was, oh, I thought this was going to be a nice thank you letter. But it was a very touching letter, what we wrote, and uh, especially from your end. And and I've always... I wish I could it back. I remember you talking about, um, well, let's not get too personal, but I remember you talking about the big events in your life at the time. And you put that in there. And I remember her re- starting to read it and then putting it away. And in my head, I was always like, oh, she she, uh, she was going to cry. Because if you remember... Uh, I remember everything. Yeah. quite tragic had happened to her around the same time that tragic things Oh, my God, yes. And I, oh. me and her very much... Oh, my God, I'm getting emotional. It's a very emotional... I, I, I have seen this movie, what, 50 times? And this morning, half nine... I was crying in my bed. The minute. Duh, duh, it's more to think about Kerry. It's more to think about Kerry. I will never get over when I was locked in her room. Oh, you by want to tell this story? The drama <laughs> department. And I was crying my eyes out. And she went, oh, and one of the teachers went, oh, don't start crying. I was like, what do you want me to do? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, she was and a great one. Kerry was really nice to me afterwards. She's she wasn't. I but, I was invited to um, the oh God. slander. I will you know this is not slander. This is because it is true. F the drama department at my our old college. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. I love when they when these become popular and uh, we 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 <laughs> lambast. No, it's very good. Apart from the first year. I didn't really oh, have much luck that year either. You didn't have much luck there either, did you? Um, the, um, Don't be the... depressed when you're in college, kids, because yeah, they get not. very bad about it. <laughs> yeah, try, yeah try, do your best. Try not to. Isn't that the moral of this film? Oh, no, yeah, I mean... Yeah, in a way. The drama no, department. The, um, yeah, don't do drama. That's the moral of the film. <laughs> don't go into acting. <laughs> I, I got out of there. I got out of there. 18 years old. I you went, did. I'm out of here. You did. I'm and we missed you. We missed you. Yeah. And look who has a career now. Sorry. No, it's, all, no, it's so true. It's so true. I mean, I do have a job. Um, I do have a job. That is true. 
but I'm not acting. No, but well, oh, you are. No. Every single day, you wake up and you have to act. <laughs> no, I don't because I'm alone in my house. Who do I have to act for? Myself. No, I mean when you're on your your cruise. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know, yeah. <laughs> well, it's what's the great Steve Martin joke when he's talking about? I you no, know, I love. I've seen so many of you do such great acting at parties. Oh hi! Oh, you loved my film. I loved yours. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of that. <clears throat> Dead Poet Society. Um. So, what was your knowledge of it before watching it last month? Just general uh, I knew teacher it was one does of good. Williams's like um, like one of his serious roles. This was his first. Well, no, 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 no. Good, good morning, Vietnam was before this. Yeah, I was going to say, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Um, but one thing I have found, not even found, this is quite a known fact, a lot of comedy actors are brilliant drama actors. Yes. Um, I mean, you're talking to one. Also, the drama actors being comedy actors. Yes. The... The only exception is, of course, Channing Tatum, who took He's excellent in everything. I tell you what, he, he he's not my favourite drama actor, but that man's funny. Have you watched Dog yet? No. Dog's great. Uh, yes, let's have a look at this. Let's right. have a look. <laughs> Dogs are great. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, Good Morning Vietnam's 87. Is it a movie called Portrait of a White Marriage? Okay. Where Fred Willard and Mary Kay Place get divorced and Martin Mull's in it and Harry Shearer directed it. This sounds great. Never heard of this film? No, I've never heard of this film. Um, then, uh, yeah, Dead Poets Society, 89. And then Awakenings. Right, this is the thing. This is the bullshit thing. Obviously, he's a comedian. But the majority of his film roles... Up until the comedy boom, I would say, of Hook, Toys, Aladdin, Doubtfire. Jack. Um, Jack, Jack, yes. Flubber. A bicentennial Men. Bicentennial Man. I've never seen Bicentennial Man. I've never seen, seen the... it, but my old housemate was obsessed with it. Have you seen The Birdcage? No, I haven't. And I, that is actually one I need to watch. Birdcage is absolutely phenomenal. It's one of my favourite films of all time. It is definitely my favourite Robin Williams performance. You know what film I love? RV. RV. Oh, yeah. I remember watching RV as a kid. I don't think I've ever thought about it since. So bad. You know what? I used to used to really scare me, though, Flubber. I was terrified of Flubber. I was never a Flubber fan, either. It really scared me. Yeah. Like, I don't like really, Flubber. Really yeah, me. Flubber's shit. We don't like Flubber. We, we're, a, we're a strong anti-Flubber podcast. Let's talk about Peter Weir. You know what film also used to scare me? Toys. Yeah, Toys is weird. Toys is just a weird oh, movie. Oh, it does have Joan Cusack in it. And... Well, there we go. We know we love Joan Cusack. Let's talk about Peter Weir. Um, probably one of my favourite directors, but I never think of him that way. I, that, and that just sounds yeah. rude. It sounds rude because you sort of forget how many films... He directed that you that you love, like Looking. Witness, Dead Poet Society, <laughs> Truman Show, Master and Commander. We don't need to talk about Master and Commander. Love Master and Commander. Yeah, we love Master and Commander. Master and yeah, My Master. Ex love. Master your ex. <laughs> your when you told me that your ex forced you to watch Master and Commander, I said the words to you. Why didn't you say that the first time you were trying to uh, say how much you how nice a guy he was, <laughs> or something? He's still very nice, but um, He's still a very nice guy. Yes. Master and Commander, when you have crippling tonsillitis, maybe maybe not. Let's talk about X's red flags. This is you didn't like my ex at all, but but nobody t nobody likes her apparently. But this only came to my knowledge after the fact. People didn't like my ex-boyfriend when I was 18, but my family, the second we broke up, was like, oh, for God, for that, we hated him. I know. Like, yeah. yeah, more people, I we need to... We, we never do. Was what? Was unfit? It wasn't the right fit. Oh. Well, neither did she. Anyway, but the biggest... Is this, is this the biggest red flag from that relationship? This was her review of Dead Poet Society. I remember it very clearly. It was kind of boring, but then when he killed himself, it got better. I kind of see where she's coming from. Really? Mainly because 
the most emotional parts happen after he's dead. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, there there is a part of me. So when you were watching it for the first time, mm. and Kurtwood Smith, Neil's dad, Mister Perry, comes to the show. Did you know that it ends with suicide? I didn't know he killed himself. So did you think it was going to be? Oh, now that I've now that lovely. I've seen you, now that I've seen you act, because yeah. it is it is set up like this. Mo- those it's movies exactly we've seen so like many times. Like, what's the bad? I'm trying to think. This it, it happens in like Mean Girls, High School Musical, of like you know the mother who or the father who I I don't think I can make it, and then they come in late. <laughs> And you think it's settled. I don't know nativity. if they are playing. Nativity, yes. Well, that's on a helicopter. Well, yeah. The, the light. Um, these they also kids. miss half the show. Yeah, so, it's terrible. But what's the point in them coming? Anyway. This that's, what you're, that's what you're paid to do. Um, this isn't about nativity. It's not about nativity. But it is set. I don't know what came first. The cliche of parent coming in halfway through important performance or this but this is now after years gone by playing on a playing on that cliche and i can't even remember the first time i watched it whether i thought it was going to end happily but did you did you think it was going to be yeah i thought i thought yeah i did not expect the ending to the film at all are you drinking banana milkshake i am drinking banana milk yes okay 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 i just wanted to make sure just for all the audio listeners tom gone off gone gone off banana milk <laughs> no 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 no. i was saying i was saying it's not a gone off glass of milk it's a glass it's a banana milk i love banana milk um it, it, i don't want to get too down but it is what makes this film a, a great film it takes yeah. what could be a very average sort of have you seen dead poet society no it's really good yeah no it's it, it robin williams is really good at it yeah no it's it's all right yeah young young ethan Hawke. oh no it? yeah it's... robin williams is heartbreaking in it ethan Hawke yeah. is heartbreaking in it do you know what i mean it, it changes it from oh yeah they're really good in it to yeah shatters my mind soul it adds a it adds a dimension to it that makes it like if this movie i don't know if this movie ends with Right, let's talk about some... Well, right, here are some of the early notes. So the original script, written by Tom Shulman, uh, based off his time at the Montgomery Bell Academy in Nashville, Tennessee, particularly with his inspirational teacher, Samuel Pickering. Um, Now, here's some movie bullshit for you. In Schulman's manuscript, Keating was ill, slowly dying of Hodgkin's lymphoma, and there was going to be a scene with him in his deathbed in the hospital uh, this was removed by Weir, who deemed it unnecessary, claiming this would focus audiences on Keating's illness and not what he stood for. Yeah. If he's Agreed. ill, Agreed. If, he's, if he's ill, it's all like, I'm going to die. I want you to make good. And, you know, I- instead of him just being a good, honest teacher and a good, honest good man. man. Yeah. And, and, and that's Is obviously... Is he married? He should be. I'd marry him. I've got a Tom's big question about that later. Don't worry. Early notes on the script from Disney also ju- suggested making the boys have a passion for dancing rather than poetry, as well as a new title, The Sultans of Swing. Focusing on the character of Mr. Okay. Keaton rather than the boys themselves. Um, yeah, no. So uh, that there's yeah, some no, terrible... Not. I don't give a shit about dancing. I also don't give a shit about poetry. But... but... It's much more, it, it, it's very niche. I don't know the fact that these boys are all just, you know, they're in this very upper class school mm. and they go, yeah, we're going to have a secret club that's poetry. <laughs> I think what makes it work is that those scenes in the caves are not just them all reading poetry and crying or being like, that's the best thing I've ever heard. They read a couple of poems and then it's an excuse to hang out and be with friends because that's what that's what it is. It's not, mm. and and I'm sure Keating in his time was exactly the same. He wasn't going to sit there for half, you know, three hours. And uh, well, notorious thigh man, uh, John Keating. Mm. Um, no, yeah. So I think another thing I, I got this from the behind the scenes stuff. It's very clear that Peter Weir was a bit of a Keating to every to all of these young people involved. He had a great passion for what he was doing, um, and he brought it to the film. A few quotes here. Ethan Hawke, he became a folk hero to us, 
uh, Melora Walters. I still have a huge crush on him. You know, these are, I think you can read very easily to the fact that um, Peter Weir was a sort of John Keating figure to these kids um, at the time. Yeah. I mean, this is like, I mean, Ethan Hawke uh, had done, what's it called? The the Travellers? No, it's not. It's called The Adventurers. What's it called? Uh, I don't know. He's a, he's a kid and it's like Explorers. And then that's in 1985 and he's a kid. Um, well, that's with River Phoenix, uh, who was optioned actually for the role of uh, Neil. Um, oh, I, c- I could see that, but I'm glad he wasn't. I can see that. I can see that. Have you seen Stand By Me? Yeah. Oh, Stand By the scene with Chris. Guess which one as a kid I fancied. This is a great game. This has become one of our favourite games. And I guessed wrong on on Dead Poets Society. Oh, but, when you found out who it but was. When I, but when I found out, A, when I found out who it was, and B, when I rewatched it this morning, if you'd have asked me now, I would have got the correct answer. Yeah. <laughs> but who, who did I fancy in Stand By Me? As a kid, not now, obviously. As a, as a kid. Um, so it's not going to be, it's not going to be Chris. Chris is too easy. Is it Gordy? Is it, is it, is it, no. Oh, did you have a thing for, for, um, what's his name? Corey Feld, Corey Feldman. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't get... <laughs> Listen, my love of Corey Feldman transcended films. Now, yeah, obviously... To his music career. <laughs> and bless him. Um... But, what about, yeah, what about Lost Media. Boys? Does he do it for you in Lost Boys? Not seen Lost Boys. Yeah. And of co- and of course, um, we're we're talking about when you were a child watching Stand by Me and the Lost Boys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm trying to look at the the cast for Lost Boys who I would have fancied. Keith Sutherland? Uh, no, he's too much. Not Keith Sutherland. Never, never him. Oh, you well, you know the great story about Keith Sutherland and Jason Patrick. No. So Julia Roberts is set to marry Keith Sutherland, or is it the other way around? He's Keith Sutherland. Keith also, Sutherland. I hate I hate that his name's Keifer. You don't like the name Keifer? No one likes the name Keifer. Uh, yeah, Julia Roberts met Sutherland in 1990. In August 1990, Roberts and Sutherland announced their engagement with an elaborate studio planned wedding. Roberts broke the engagement three days before the wedding. Alleging allegedly because Sutherland had been meeting with a go-go dancer named Amanda Rice. On the day of what was supposed to be their wedding, Roberts went to Ireland with Sutherland's friend, Jason Patrick. Great story. Who would you choose? What, Jason Patrick or Keith Sutherland? Yeah. Um I don't know. The answer is think... Jason Patrick, he's way fitter. Oh, all right, calm down. Yeah, but Keith Sutherland's more fun. He's so weird looking. <laughs> Did you like him in Stand by Me as Ace Merrill? No, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I haven't seen Stand by Me in ages, to be honest oh, with Stand you. Stand by Me is so, 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 so good. I love Stand by. That's. It's weird. Do you it's want to weird know the li- first time I ever watched Stand by Me? Shoot. Um. It's also the same time that I watched Shawshank Redemption. Okay. And Misery. So he liked Stephen King. Wait a second. Because it was a triple bill of a family guy. <laughs> <laughs> and that was very good. Uh, that was <laughs> That's that true. Took, I think that I had seen Stand By Me before that. Yeah. Um, that is good. But, that is a good, pretty episode. That is a funny episode. Stewie is the one from Misery. Yeah, Stewie is Annie Wilkes. Genius. The it one is. from Misery. Her name is Annie Wilkes. Um, I know, I've got the book. I don't know why I said that. It's a great book. Um, director Peter Weir chose to shoot the film chronologically. In, yes, uh, I to, did see that. To better capture the development of the relationships between the boys and their growing respect for Mr Keating. Um, they... They try to do this whenever they can. It's obviously harder than uh, harder than normal shooting because it's easier on a film like this where you've got one setting effectively. Mm. Well, not not really. I mean, you've got 
Chris has, you've got a, a whole other 50s high school. The, the majority of the scenes are in the classroom or on the school. Yeah. Um, I have no information on uh, what school they used. Whilst we talk about other castings, we'll do a bit more on other castings before we get to the actual film itself. River Phoenix for Neil. Matt Damon and Ben Affleck auditioned for unspecified roles. So Matt Damon, Todd. Todd, I reckon. Ben Affleck. Mm, Dalton, not. Colin. Yeah. Mm, he's a bit of a bad boy. But was he? Yeah. Uh, who knows? Um, here are a few names for John Keating. I'm gonna rate I'm gonna take them from most obvious, I think, to lead to bizarrest. So this is Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the part of John Keating was once intended for Dustin Hoffman. Uh, it was also supposed to be D Hoffman's directorial directorial debut. Obviously, yeah, good choice. Would have been fine. Mm. I don't. It, yeah. Um, Mel Gibson. Oh no. Oh, oh, I, I did. I did them in the wrong order. Mel Gibson. Very I odd. Hate Mel, Mel Gibson. I'm sorry. I hate him. We're going to be talking about somebody else you hate later. I bet you didn't even realise. He creeps up on you. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. Uh, Liam Neeson. Oh, oh, well, there's no black people in the film, so he, he could have been he, fine, actually. He would have been fine. I just got um, I just uh, got so angry and I took to the streets. Um, Bill what Murray. A mental derangement. What a, 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 hmm? Bill Murray. Bill Murray oh, was. Yeah. That. yeah, Bill Murray. The same sort of vibe as Robin, of sort of yeah, complete, these very great comedic comedy roles. Actor. Or can do sad middle aged man roles. Yeah. Um, Alec Baldwin. Hmm. As long as he plays it like he does Blake from uh, Glengarry Glen Ross, and he comes in, rip your book out now. Or <laughs> um, the dentist from. Uh... That's Steve Martin. Oh, I always get them mixed up. I because think I've you done love... This... Is it I've because you love before. It's Complicated? I've done this before, haven't I? I've mixed them up before. I, I can't remember. I don't know a chance that you'd have been able to with me. I definitely have, because in my head, the second you said Steve Martin, I was like, oh, no, I've done this, no, before. Done this before. Well, it is complicated. Um, it have you, is. Have you seen It's Complicated? I've seen a clip of it on TV. <laughs> Is it a Steve Martin fan appreciation video? No, it was it was just a clip of when he walks in. And oh, Martin, and the Mac. Yeah. A good scene. Mm. Bad film. And Mickey Rourke. <laughs> and, I know. I, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, and uh, let's talk about... But, I know, yeah. But, yeah. Box office. Budget of sixteen point four million million dollars, uh, box office of two hundred and thirty five point nine million dollars. So a big hit, um, big hit. Can you imagine? I didn't know if this would have been a big hit or if it would have just gone over time that it would have been one. Um, Do you no, know, what I mean, I didn't know if it was like a cult. It had become like a cult classic kind of thing. No, I think it's a quite a a, a broadly broad appeal to it. It's got a broad appeal mm. to it. Um, and, of course, it was an Oscar for a runner. Oh, yeah, of course. Fair enough. Um, let's talk about that now. Let's talk about this now. We've got three minutes before our first break. Uh, so, best picture, uh, Field of Dreams, My Left Thoughts, uh, which are both... Uh, oh, no, sorry, no, let me break this down. Driving Miss Daisy wins, which is the absolute, like, worst of the worst... You know, average, bland, um, sort of it's very populist. green book, isn't it? It's exactly green book, <laughs> except it's the other way around. Yeah, and, this, and Jessica Tandy learns not to be racist, and Dan Aykroyd's in it. Oh, yeah. twin. <laughs> um, then you've got second tier, which I'm going to say are Dead Poets Society, Field of Dreams, and My Left Foot, which are and and Born on the Fourth of July, actually. Field All of, of the Dreams. That's the one with the baseball ghost. If the if you build it, they will come. And all four of right, these, movies, okay. I would say, all four of these movies are very, very solid entertainments that could be seen as bland dramas, but all have a little bit of a twist 
that take them to another level of quality. My well, left yeah, foot. Yeah, go space ball. Don't don't be mean. If you watched Field of Dreams, you'd be so in. I've seen it. Oh right, I'm sorry. So you're not in. Well, I saw it like ten years ago, so I don't know. It might might change my mind by now. Who knows? Um. Oh, let's talk about this. Let's talk. Oh, sorry. Uh, best supporting actor, Denzel Washington wins for Glory. I, 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 I'm happy with that. I'm fine with that. I can live with that. I like Denzel. Yeah. Um, oh, this. Is... Yeah, yeah, he is. Here's the thing. Robin's not going to win either way, but because um, Denzel wins for best supporting actor, great win, and Daniel Day Lewis wins for My Left Foot in best actor. Robin Williams was nominated for Best Actor. He's a actor. Yeah. But he was nominated for Best Actor. I know, I know. Do you think that, that he was nominated? Like you... But he's not. Ethan uh-huh. Hawke would be in that section, if any of them. They had to get a nomination in for Dan Aykroyd as Bully Vertan. Uh, in Driving Miss Daisy. Bloody hell, I've never seen Driving Miss Daisy. Don't, 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 don't. I don't. just know it's like a green book, kind of. Yeah, it's bad, it's bad. We're going to take our first break and then we're going to talk about the best five nominations for best original screenplay ever. Intermission time. Intermission over. Intermission over. I think these are genuinely the best, um, the best five um nominees ever for best screenplay uh original screenplay and i not like not over time but i think this is the best like this block year, of five that year. yeah so um we don't you hate woody allen that's fair enough but crimes and misdemeanors is definitely personally his best screenplay and that's it do the right thing spike lee sex lies and videotape steven soderbergh when harry met sally nora from and dead poet society tom shulman I love When Harry Met Sally. When Harry Met Sally is excellent. Dead Poets Society wins. Oh. You know what? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. When Harry Met Sally no, yeah. should win. When Harry Met Sally should win. But, yeah, but it's not the best screenplay, is it? Yeah, it probably is. You think? I think Well, it's so. between those two for me, because I, I hate Woody Allen. So you do hate Woody Allen. Um, and you haven't seen Do the Right Thing, or no? Um, I haven't. It's good. Um, but I will say, when Harry Met Sally is one of my favourite rom coms. It it's it's the best. Um, there we go. Let's talk about the uh, film itself, Dead Poet Society. At uh, best ten minute stretches, we've sort of touched on a few already. But here are my here are my seven nominations and then you pitch in if you think I've missed one or if not well, <laughs> seven nominations yeah. 70 minutes of <laughs> that's to me just well me. yeah but th- it's not 10 minutes is it it's like seven minutes here anyway whatever first lesson with Mr Keating the photo cabinet um and the sort of yes. sort of oh, God, you know these are fertilizer now and then at the end Cameron going do you think he'll test us on that stuff Cameron we hate Cameron I just don't like Cameron at all no, nothing to like. Terrible person. Uh, He's no Dalton. He is no Dalton. Big winner for this uh, this watch for me. Uh, first meeting of the Dead Poets Society, you know, and they're running through the woods and it's all dark. Yeah, it's then, great. I love that one. Very good. Um, the reading of the poems, so to Chris, uh, Knox's love story to Chris, uh, into uh, Sweaty Tooth Madman and the one spinning thing around. I will say, though, is I find Knox so creepy. We've got what's the change. We've got what's the change. We can do all that later. Yeah. <laughs> I think overall it works apart from one obvious moment. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, I think it's quite a nice, maybe it's just because I'm an idiot and I fancy Chris a lot. You're not surprised that I fancy Chris. Was, no, was, not at all. The minute, the minute she came on screen, did you go, oh, I bet Tom fancies her? No, I didn't. I wasn't. Because you don't think about yeah, you don't think about it. I wasn't really thinking about it. Because whereas I was when the film. Whereas when Colin came on, I thought Katarina. Well we don't no, his name's not Colin. Why do I keep calling him Colin? 
Charles, Charlie Dalton. Charlie Dalton. Charlie Dalton. You've been saying Colin a lot. I've been like, I know. Colin. It's Colin. Um, the reading of the poem. Yeah, the sweaty tooth madman and the spinning around and the spinning around and the spinning around and the spinning around and a blanket that will always keep your feet cold. And then that wonderful ending of, don't you forget about this. Um, the phone prank with uh, leading then into uh, Dalton getting his ass whooped into mm. uh, evil Nolan talking with Keating about unorthodox methods. That man. He's very that man. Who do you hate more? Well, no. This isn't even a question. Obviously, Neil's dad. Yeah, Neil's dad is evil. <laughs> and uh, then into Keating coming to uh, uh, going to the boys and saying, "No, I think that's stupid." Um, then I've got Mister Perry coming to Neil about the play, and then Neil going to Keating about the play, mm -hmm. and then obviously play and suicides. Um, which is the absolute highest think, of highs. I think, I think ten. If I was going to choose a ten minutes, maybe not necessarily my favorite, but in terms of the most like influential of the entire film, mm. there's two that stand out to me. Well, we haven't said my seventh nomination, which is going to be the winner. Let's not even try and be cute. Yeah. It's but, the ending. Yeah, obviously. Well, it, obviously, it's my captain. My you know, yeah. my captain. My captain. That scene, Todd's entire face throughout the entire thing. Oh. Ethan Hawke, you literally, like, oh, I'm sorry as well. You may disagree with me. There is a love story in this film. Oh. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I think part of Neil's being an actor and things All right. is kind of an allegory. Yeah. Being gay. Oh, I, oh, no, I don't necessarily disagree, but that's not what I thought you were going to say. I thought you were going to say Todd's gay for Neil. Um, yes. Oh, you think they're both he gay? absolutely is. Okay, yeah, go for I that. I think they both are, but I think the whole thing of Todd's repression, the yeah. fact that he loves poetry, he, you know, he's good at poetry, but he doesn't, he, he doesn't have that confidence. Yeah that and neil's being an actor the only time that he's like out and proud being an actor being on stage and then his dad completely shuts him down and then he okay. kills himself yeah all right yeah tell no, me the... that they aren't not I don't no know no i can see that i, I can see think... that yeah it's been it's better than the theory somebody once told me that high school musicals about being bi <laughs> He wants to do basketball, but he also wants to do musicals. <laughs> um, no, I think I think this one. I think you know the only time that he's ever allowed to be himself, you know, on stage, mm. not caring, you know, yeah. in a more you know feminine role. Yes. As in, like he's dressed up, acting on stage. No offense to you, no offense, to William. <laughs> um, it is but even more... Will has lied to himself and become an architect. He... <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it is a typically more feminine. Yeah, no, no, no. Not even just no, feminine. You're very, but how many nineteen fifties actors were actually gay? Well, I mean, if you look at a sample size, I don't know. I don't like it. lots of people. You know, there were, no, there was a tremendous amount of closeting in in all realms <laughs> of life. Probably uh, still is. Oh well, yes, hence the um. Uh, the, the world, I don't know what the end Do of that sentence is going to be. Do you want to tell me, is there anything you need to tell me now, Tom? Well, t I should tell you now that Tom's big question. <laughs> um, no. Uh, but I think, I just think... No, I can see it. No, no, it's a fair point. It's a fair point. I would say it's more so... No, I guess it's... The, no, I guess... No, there's no, there's no reboot. I think the biggest thing, there's no rebuke. Is there a part of you that wishes... Right, my biggest change. We'll talk about this now because, as every as any time I have you on, everything goes out the window. But, right before I before I move on, we'll do your seventh one. Best ten minute stretch is the final scene, obviously. Of course, there's no doubt about it. I don't even want to try and for be me, cute. for me, just Todd in the snow. Okay. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, and his belief that the father did it. Now, whether he's saying. 
you know, it, you know, his father, whether he believes his father actually shot him or whether he, he believes uh, or whether he's saying in that moment and everybody is confused and doesn't understand because nobody understands him. Neil, like Todd does. Oh my God! No, I'm right. <laughs> the uh, there is... we're gay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out. I don't know. He made picnic at uh, picnic at Hanging Rock as his first film. That's about a load of oh, girls that, going. Oh, how exciting! I'm going to look if Peter Weir's gay. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, was <laughs> it? Oh. Peter Weir gay. I, it's it's not. It doesn't. Peter Weir gay. Let's have a look. We're going to take a uh, short pause as we uh, as Katrina gets her package, and I find out if Peter Weir's gay. Hello, we're back. Uh, I can't find anything. I I we're I've all, all I've got. I've got an, an article from Collider.com saying Dead Poets Society shines brighter through a queer lens. This classic may not be explicitly queer, but it certainly has a notable subtext. That's by Emily, Emily Kavanagh from July 1st, 2022. So it's a... Yeah, no, it's coming. I can't find... Nobody, mm, nobody's saying anything. Is he a friend of Dorothy? I don't know. I don't know. I can't find anything. It doesn't say. Todd's queerness can be seen as more repressed than Neil's. Yeah, no, I think it's there. It's there. It's there. Um, I'll give you it. I'll give you it. Um, but then again, I also did find gay subtext in Frankenstein. So take that what you <laughs> in which It, my it all comes back me, to Kerry Boyle. In my Keating, Kerry Boyle told me that that's actually a very valid um, look, oh, you know, view of the... View of Victor's, the Victor's definitely gay. Victor's gay. Victor is Victor's the gay. Victor's gay. Victor's, gay. Victor's so gay. I want to make a way to make children without having to have sex with a woman. <laughs> and then... I went into the... Oh, welcome to my honeymoon. my childhood friend died. When my childhood, oh, when my childhood friend died. And then, I mean, we know the biggest thing of all. Oh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, on our honeymoon. Oh, what should we do? Hmm. I'm going to go... <laughs> And then he couldn't even get that sad when she's dead. But oh, Spen when when his friend died, what's his friend name again? Spencer something? I don't know. Spencer. It's definitely not called Spencer. <laughs> I don't Victor Frankenstein. The other reason that there's chemistry in the in the film between Elizabeth and uh and um Victor is because it's Kenneth Branagh and Helen of Bonham Carter and they're railing off screen. Don't tell Emma Thompson. Don't tell Emma Thompson. Who do you think told Emma Thompson? Oh. This is the world's worst Tom's big question. I don't um, know. Claire Val. It's Claire Val, isn't it? Henry Clerval. Henry Clerval, that's it, yeah. Have you seen... Where's um, that Spencer from? I don't know. Have you seen Mary Shelley's Frankenstein with Kenneth Branagh? And Robert De Niro. No. Really good. Actually, you know what? I have really seen good. Young Frankenstein, and that's the only Frankenstein film I need to watch. That's an incredible, incredible film. Ovaltine, warm milk. Frau Brucker. <laughs> who is your favourite um, Who is your favorite female performance in Young Frankenstein? I've had this debate with my friend Ava before. Is it Madeline Kahn, Terry Garr, or Cloris Leachman? Oh, sorry. You don't know people. Um, is it uh, is it Frau Blucher? Is it Victor's wife, or is it Ah oh, Terry Gar? I can't remember their names. Um, when she gets transformed. Oh, Madeline Kahn. Yeah, Madeline yeah. Kahn. And she falls in love with who has sex with the? It's Madeline Kahn. Who has the, yeah, the, no, yeah, they, yeah, they yeah, get yeah. married. Such a deep love because there's a great song in the musical. I have a deep love. I want <laughs> so, to see the musical. It's very good, actually. In both of the Madeleine Kahn, um, Mel Brooks movies, she ends up loving Big Dick. Why not? Anyway, why not? <laughs> um, A woman asked that. Okay. Tom's big question. How big was Keating? Now, um, Tom's really specific favorite parts of the film. Here are a few. Uh, running the old man through what to do with the candle of the light of knowledge. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the candle. Um, oh, so you're that, Anderson. Um Keating peeking out as the kids come in and smiling. He's like, look at all these kids. I'm going to change their lives up. Um, 
when he's walking outside whistling and he goes, well, come on. Um, whispering Carpe Diem. These boys are fertilizing methodists. Uh Mrs. Danbury. Oh, with Chris at the minute Chris Walt opens the door. Um uh, you just absolutely fall on the breath. I know it's I know it's the easiest cut. I know that you could cut this, cut 20 minutes out of the Chris and Knox stuff, and it's probably a better film. Or give more scenes to Todd. I'm amazed. Like Todd disappears for like 40 minutes in the middle of this film. Well, right. It is I want bad, more Todd. Yeah. I think Ethan Hawke is a brilliant actor. I think he always has been. He's great. And it's it feels it feels like it's trying to be an ensemble film, which obviously it is. That's a stupid thing to say. But also, this should definitely be more Todd in the middle of this film, and it should be better distributed. And the fact that we go spend 10 minutes with Knox going to Chris's house party. Knox is one of the most boring characters in the film. Yeah, he probably is. But also, you know, what, in fact, he probably is the most boring character in the film. He is, he is, he is. But also, Chris is beautiful. Alexandra Prowers. Anyway, that's Except the, for the point. scene. We'll talk about it. Don't worry, I've got it. What's the change? Um, Cameron drawing out the the graph of bullshit poems, <laughs> like the rating. Uh, rip, rip. Uh, Cameron using his ruler to score a line to rip. We hate Cameron. Um, hey, Cameron. When they show him the yearbook, burn that, especially my picture. Uh, the um, Oh, and then M Mr. Anderson and him nearly falling off the desk. Don't think I don't know that this assignment scares the hell out of you, you mole. Uh, is he too mean? No. The, first, the first thing he does, ah, oh, Mr. Pitts, hmm, terrible name. It, what a weird name. Mr. Pitts, ah, another unusual name. Was Anderson a mole? He's a bit of a mole, though, isn't he? Yeah, I guess, I guess. Um, the chasing around the room and on the bed as they're jumping up and down and playing with each yeah, other. Love, oh, my love... God, again. Right? <laughs> These bitches gay. <laughs> um, uh, mm, sounds to me like you're daunted. I like that. Um, I love here. So after Knox does his to Chris poem, it's the first time he says sort of like, Sorry, Captain, it's stupid. And it's so thrown away. And it's sort of, I mean, earlier they say to him, oh, Captain, and he's like, oh, hello. You know, when they clearly, when he can hear them already. But mm. it's, I love sorry, Captain, it's stupid because it's just so thrown away. And from that point on, it builds in that they are actually calling him Captain. Um, I love Dalton, like, ending up playing some good sax down in the down in the cave. Right. That's lovely. Great. Um, I love Knox, I mean, you could say this as being annoying Knox, but like, I think it's really intentional. Them saying, if I don't have Chris, I'm going to kill myself. Mm -hmm. And that sort of throwaway, blase. Like you're a 16 year old boy. Like no, but I'm not saying it for that. I'm saying it like, little do they know, within a month, they'll be reckoning with real suicide. Yeah. yeah. But also, like, it's such a 16 year old boy feeling to. Yeah. To just be like, oh, I need this person or else this is it. It's such a teenage feeling. But then obviously yes. there is the real, you know, the fact that, oh, that suddenly does have real world implications for them. Mm. Um, exercising the right nut to walk. Very funny. Um, it's no wonder, Cameron. That's right. It's no wonder. I love Melora Walters in the cave. That's right. It's no wonder. I love um, no wonder. Um, Mr. Nolan, it's God. Now, Shawshank, have you seen Shawshank? Have you seen Cuckoo's Nest? I've seen Shawshank. So we'll go with Shawshank then. But I we saw that on stage. Yes, we did. Who's the king? Um, <laughs> yeah. The the in in the film, it's such a I think we talked about this in the Shawshank episode, but we went to see a terrible staged version of Shawshank Redemption, which was absolutely awful. And instead of the, you know, the beautiful, subtle way that Frank Darabont portrays the uh, rape of Andy and the slow camera back and Morgan Freeman talking, instead, Andy loses a chess match and the lights cut to black and then suddenly all we hear is, who's the king? Who's the king? And he's going like, oh, oh, oh. oh. I it as well. No, it cut to black. It, it was we were sat in a blacked out Sheffield theatre, listening to "Who's the King? Who's the King," uh, which is not in the book. 
Um, if it had been collect, now that would have been daring. Uh, Neil's uh, smile when he walks into the theatre and uh, looking at the stage and just that little thing of beautiful. You know, he's happy here. He's yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> to feel good. <laughs> Uh, Keating's face when Neil lies to him. Oh my God! When Neil's talking about like you know, no, no, I, I, I he's it, and and because he slips. I mean, Keating knows from the off, but when he, it's I think there's a slip where he says, um, he's in Chicago, so uh, he won't be able to make it. Um, he'll he'll definitely be there for at least four days, oh. and it's the way that he says that of he'll he'll definitely be there at least for four days, where Keating's like. Oh god, this is a lot. and that face, and then he's nodding and slightly smiling and and grinning, and it's very sad and beautiful, beautiful performance. Neil, uh, I've put here Chris at the door, snow behind her, wearing a green coat. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It was a beautiful image. She's a beautiful woman, um, and then Chris gesturing to come with white gloves in the snow, also very nice. Um, Keating laughing during the play, and his thumbs up to Charlie, um, Colin. <laughs> When 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 Charlie goes, it's really good. Uh, I lovely little moment. Not hearing the gunshot. Mm. Very well, very well edited, and and um, yeah, very well done. That whole scene of him going downstairs, and you can yeah. see he's still kind of making his mind up. There's still the oh, I can't. But then he's like, oh, that is very. And also, funny. I don't want to, you know, be blasé, but there's a theat. There's a theatrics to it. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, he puts the crown down. This is my, this is, and now they will understand. Yeah. There is a, there is, there is a, a, a he horrifying like theatrics didn't actually to it. want to kill himself. He just kind of wanted to, but he did, he does, if that makes No, he sense. definitely does. It's the 10 years, it's no, the 10 it, years of, of, of bullshit, of what is it, it military it, school and Harvard. I mean, it's kind yeah. of like a, I want them to see, but also... I don't know. It's, it's an interesting one. I think they do a really good job throughout of fleshing out the relationship with the father to also I hate to the dad. He's a pretty awful dad, Kurtwood Smith. Neil, my boy, my boy. Um, and he, they do a very good job of fleshing out the fact that Neil will not run away. You know, this isn't a story where. He's going to, you know, I don't know, like a Goodwill Hunting. Very different end, very different situation. But like, it's the ending of this. I can see an ending of this film, a bit like Short Short Redemption, of, of, of like Neil um, packing up his bags that night instead and him, and him driving away and Keating still being fired um, because, you know, he's led to a kid running away. And then the ending is a happy ending again, like of Goodwill Hunting, of Neil sending Keating a letter going, Mr. Keating, Todd told me you've been fired. I'm so sorry that I had, if I could have had any part it's, of that, I'm sorry. Yeah, but I want you to know I'm happy. And then, you know, it's all been worth him it. In for New York. Happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> him in New York in a, in, in a gay bar, in a production, <laughs> as a struggling actor. But it's um, like, I don't know, the fact he doesn't leave a note because he doesn't no. need to. Yeah, and he would have probably it's... quoted poetry, which would have been even worse for Keating. Yeah, but do you know what I mean? He didn't need to because the people who were actually closest to him knew why he did it. Everybody knows. It's great stuff. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. Sorry. It's just What's that from? from? Uh, Girl in Interrupted. Oh, yes, it is. That. <laughs> Who's the best performance in Girl Interrupted? And why is it Whoopi Goldberg? Oh, okay. Hot take. Hot take. We should do it when you're back. We will do an episode on Girl Interrupted. I love Girl Interrupted. Um, I'll read the book. I'll read the book then, so we can, so I can talk about the book, because I remember my drama teacher, uh, my one of another another key thing in my life. Honestly, he's always said that the film is great, but the book would be a perfect play. Mm. I could see that actually. Yeah, smallest limited settings, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, I've got oh yeah, a couple more. Um, again, Charlie in the background, not singing the hymnals. 
just doesn't give a shit anymore. What this is all pointless. What the hell are we still doing here? And, I, you know uh, what? I love that. Yes, the reason he wants girls at the school is probably because he wants like sex. Yeah, but also feminist. And also, he stands by. I don't want to throw Todd under the bus and say that Todd's a shit because obviously he's not. He's wonderful, and even Knox and everybody else. But God damn it, Charlie stands his ground and he gets expelled. And he, you know, we love. It's why you know I I've always had a rebel mentality. I mean, I've always been a. I, I don't want to make out like I'm a, a rebel of any note. But Me you and were Tom there in the second year of college. I like let's not forget me announcing this was before she'd actually died me announcing the queen <laughs> dying and like me wanting the quiz you know it's it's all these small stupid things but I just hate bullshit and I hate bureaucracy and like I I, I cover up against me and them. Tom are rebels at heart actually, like yeah. genuinely second year of college me and Tom just did not give a shit. I didn't give a shit, and like with the with the quizzes, and because like they they wanted to stop the quizzes because it was work for them to send a few emails. And I was like, and they said, well, the money that we're raising isn't enough. And I said, if we raise twenty quid for charity a week, that's a lot more than nothing, you dicks. Anyway, mm. anyway, uh, no, we do have rebel mentality, and I think it's because of watching Cuckoo's Nest as an early kid. You haven't seen Cuckoo's Nest, but it is this exact sort of formula of guy coming into and changing these people's lives forever um and there's another big link but i don't want to say what that is but you'll have probably just guessed that from me saying there's a big link uh <laughs> keating crying at the dead poets book just beautiful and the the way it's shot with the you know it's just coming up with the light i don't know whether he stayed in his office all night crying or what or coming to terms with it because obviously it's not keating's fault but he will never reck- reckon with that mentally for the. He will reckon with that mentally for the rest of his it's life. Gaslit, because fault is the wrong word. But he definitely, in the great cosmic scheme of things, he opened a door. Yes, you know, if you go back far enough, you can blame anybody, and yeah, you could Butterfly say thing. that it indeed with Ashton Kutcher, and but. You could I say I them way too young. Who would you cast Ash- Ashton Kutcher as in this film? Knox. Yeah, and then cut and then cut it. And Mil- Mila Kunis as uh, as uh, Chris. I'd be down. I'd be down. How we good is to... forgetting Sarah Marshall? So good. We need to do an episode. We'll do. We'll do. Forgetting Sarah Marshall and Girl Interrupted in the New Year. There you go. There's a and that's a Thomas Promise. Thomas Promise. That's our new podcast. Thomas Promise. It's a bad podcast. Uh, Probably my like most visceral favorite reaction is obviously the punching of Cameron. Um, I love the glimpses of the friendship with Mister McAllister. Like the starting with the quotes at the dinner Mm. table. And you think that that's going to be just a sort of you know Keaton getting one up and actually I'm smarter than all of you, but then. That's clearly a moment of friendship. And then we see them laughing in the staff room together later. And then that final wave. And, you know, McAllister is obviously going to keep his job. He's a quote-unquote boring Latin teacher. But there is a clear, like, there, he had somebody on With his the side. the camaraderie. Yeah, he had somebody. It's, he probably, um, and if we look at it through a queer lens, no, he um, probably was made him a better teacher for that period it was like, it's those sort of things where it's like it reminds you how good teaching is i always remember one of my another keating of mine my history teacher mr rotway and he said i can't remember what was the context but we, it was in year 11 and it was like talking about you know like teaching and he said i hate teaching for the test and that it was and that stuck and that stuck with me a little bit um whenever anybody's been like do you want to you should you'd be a great teacher and I probably would, but I'd be a great teacher like Keating or like Phil. You didn't like Phil, but that's beside the point of just making up your own curriculum and, you know, actually trying to have an effect. But that's yeah. not, that's not the allowed. First, the first year of our drama A-level, as much as me and Phil clashed heads a lot. Um, you never wanted to be an actor or whatever, but it may, you know, it was... It was I did. That was, 
And yeah, he told okay. me I was bad at acting. So you weren't bad I, at acting. You were just you were you you weren't bad at acting. But it made you a better actor. It made us all better actors. It made us creatively invigorated. For him to come on a Tuesday and say, "I want you to make a a, a piece on on Friday by Friday," and it has to be uh, set in the sixties, and you have to have a random. You have to. It has to have a twist ending or whatever. And then we had to come up with a half hour piece by Friday. That is the sort of creative, actual invigorment that Still you need. Still, one of the best life. things you've ever you've ever written. Really? No. I, I, I well, what if I adapt? I could, I could, I could you work could adapt on the well-respected man. Well-respected man, yeah. This is when these podcasts become famous, and well-respected man gets wins, sweeps the Academy Awards. Um, what else was oh, there? Are my uh, specific? Oh, and then Neil's empty desk at, at the end. Um, mine is um, yeah. I was going to say Germany. moments is Dalton waking up Todd. Oh god! And he's just got like that one tear down his face, and this is a com- This is a comedic character. This is a comedic side character, and he's yeah. so sad. And because- Todd's, and I love Todd's like just typical. Morning reaction of oh, he thinks it's going to be a joke or whatever. He's like, "Not Charlie, please." Yeah, yeah. And then they're and they all have... stood in the doorway. I think they're all stood in the doorway, or does he go? Yeah, out no, and... no, no. They go outside. They're all they're all stood in the doorway. Yeah. And then and then it cuts to him walking in the snow. Oh God, him in the snow. Am I really boring, or does it matter at all how depressed you are? There's no way you're walking in the snow in, in your in your pajamas. I don't care yeah, how depressed like I am. He's, he's searching. No, I know, I know. Someone he, he loves it. I also really love the moment with the the desk, and he his parents have bought him the same oh, writing yeah. thing before, and then him and Neil. Yeah. Maybe they thought you needed another one. They loved each other. And then when and then when they throw it away, you know, I wouldn't worry. You'll get another one next year. Yeah, it's great. It has a it, in right. I had that as a nomination for best single minute because it, in a minute it has genuine sweetness, genuine humor, genuine human drama, and a genuine sadness to it, and a and a sort and a reflection of these characters, and that's the whole film. And genuine humor, the- genuine sweetness, genuine coming of age, and you know. I think they genuinely bond in that moment as well because they've both got parents who don't understand them, who don't know who they are, and mm. you know, they're gay. Yes. Let's stick with. Are best you getting it more then. now? You look. No, I. Like, no, I'm getting it. They're gay. <laughs> <laughs> they're gay. They're gay all along. Here are, here are some other nominations for best single minute, and then we'll decide because I think that's a very strong nomination. Actually, that might be our winner. I've got here. Uh, Neil's dad coming to tell him to drop the extra the extracurriculars. Don't you ever dispute me in public. Like that's the first scene we get, and it's like, oh no, I hate oh, his dad so much. It's not good. Um, probably our strongest other nomination is the understanding poetry sequence and the ripping ripping it yeah. out. And you're like, okay, all right, I'm into this. Yeah, this is this is what this and guy's also, gonna do. You know, just them on the desks when he's leaving. My captain, my captain. I feel like that's not that long. That's very no, specific. I know. You, yeah, I know. I, I, I've slowly come to realise that my formula is absolute bullshit, Katrina. And every time you come on, you rip it apart. These, I should have just made it to best scene, but best scene's shit. I wanted, I wanted something. I wanted a difference. I know this is the better. Don't be friends with me life. then, because I'm gonna tear everything. I'm glad that we've talked. I'm glad that you've mentioned it first because I think I've finally come to this realization. Uh, Neil coming to Todd about the acting audition, beautiful scene, and then that leads into that big spinning shot of them jumping on the beds together. I um, love that scene. Yeah, it's very nice. Um, I've put here calling Chris, but don't worry, we're not going to talk about it for long. Uh, uh, bringing the girls to the cave. Have you seen Goodfellas? Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen The Irishman? No. Okay. You know, in Goodfellas, the Lois who uh, has her lucky hat, and they she does the drug smuggling with the kids. Yes. That's Tina oh in my this. God. I forgot my lucky hat. I love Lois. I love, and she's wonderful as uh, Al Pacino as as J- Joe Hoffa in. Uh, um, 
in Irishman. I want to see her face. And also, have you have you watched Boogie Nights and Magnolia? I can't remember. I've not seen Boogie Nights. Okay, or the, the the wonderful Melora Walters. Uh, and, and and there's the great stuff there of you know compare thee to a summer's day. I made that up just for you. Uh, I've put in Neil Lyon to Keating about being in the play, and uh, and then Charlie coming for Cameron the Rat, and that whole scene of them uh, deciding what to do in. The I think I've just seen space. a screenshot of the play that they did. Oh, so you know who Keating is? Mm. Oh, I thought you'd be happy. Let's talk about this now. We've got five minutes to talk about it. Jason Sudeikis. Good, he got good reviews. The overall play was like... Yeah, bit, I like Jason little... Sudeikis. I like Jason Sudeikis a lot. It'd been very I, awkward I if we also have our Harry Styles casting. One of the kids I see, this one, I know him, as in not personally, obviously, but no, no, no. I watched him in a film. All right. Um... No, it was directed by John Doyle, who me and Will over the course of the Sundown episodes railed into multiple times because uh, all he does is like make everything minimal. And this was minimal, apparently. You know, Tom Shulman shaved half an hour from his script, uh, which leads me to believe that it was an hour 40, which means that they probably did it without intermission. Uh, characters were dropped and all that sort of thing, and they truncated it, and it was all one stage, and all of the sets were done with books. Um. I know. I don't know. I think I, I think it could work. Anything can work. Anything can work, but I just I don't know. Jason Stakis, I don't know. Don't think he's got the same gravatar as Robin Williams. Does. No, probably not. But he also but I also think he has a good sort of fatherly sort of like but also quite comedic. I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. Who would you cast? I don't know. I was thinking Jason Bateman. Oh, perfect. Yeah. I see Thank that. You. Thank you. Thank you. I do kind of fancy Jason Bateman a little bit. Maybe that's why. Yeah, I can... Not Daddy, him in Daddy. Juno, Oz though. He's a creep Oz in Juno. Ozark Daddy. <laughs> Ew. He's such a creep in Juno. Yes, he is. He is. Yes, he is. Poor Jennifer Connelly. Is it Jennifer Connelly? No. It's... Oh, Jennifer Garner. Jennifer Garner. Oh my God, I should be ashamed of myself. You should. I should. Jennifer Connelly. You know, Jennifer Connelly on the mind. Can you blame me? She's Can you blame me, Katrina? I have to hand my Top Gun Maverick Blu-ray, which arrived yesterday. Oh, I love him. There he is. There's Tom. Him. There's Tom. I love him. Imagine, imagine being every in every time Jennifer someone Connelly and having and not having any chemistry. No, no, I think they do have chemistry. I think they. I think they do have chemistry. It, no, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Jennifer Connelly, what a woman. Um, soundtrack corner. Not really much to talk about here, so we can fit it yeah. in before the next break. Let's have a party by Wanda Jackson. Sort it. Yeah, big happy. You know, we'll do a montage and all that sort of thing. But the beautiful Maurice Jar score is very nice. Uh, the final piece is beautiful, but apart from that, it's not really a score I've ever seen. Isn't the music music's a big thing in this film? I, I feel like if there was lots of musical moments, it'd kind of detract from. Yeah, I wouldn't say story. throughout. I wouldn't say throughout it's a very musically dependent film. However, the final chords are like the best of the best. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back in uh, just a moment to talk about everything else we have to talk about. Intermission time. Intermission time, indeed. Okay, it's then. Let's... Over. Intermission over. Yes, of course. I always forget uh, your new thing. You didn't do this on the Everything Everywhere, or was it? Well, uh, uh, no, like, but I just thought, I just thought I'd, I'd, I'd bring it in. Yeah, no, no I think it's good. Uh, best line, throw away one. Mr. McAllister on the stairs. Slow down, you horrible phalanx of pubescence. Very random. Um, very, very... Oh, who wrote that? Do you know what I mean? It was probably Tom Shulman's favourite day of writing. Maybe. He's probably really proud of that one. Um, gathering of virgins. Rather appropriate, isn't it? Um, there's a time for daring and there's a time for caution. And a wise man understands which is called for. Very good. Um, What's the one where they're like, poetry is what we stay alive for or something like that? That. Oh. 
Well, I like that one. That was good, yeah. Uh, show me the heart and fettered by foolish dreams, and I'll show you a happy man. But only in their dreams can men be truly free. It was always thus, and always thus will be. Tennyson? No. Keating. Uh, when they're ripping up the uh, introduction page, it's not the Bible. You're not going to go for hell for this. Um, and then uh, we're not laughing at you. We're laughing near you. And how can you describe poetry like American Bandstand? Well, I like Byron. I'd give him about a 52. Uh, any other uh, nominations for best line, Katrina? <laughs> I just read in one, which I, I I always I like. Language was developed for one endeavor, and that is Mr. Anderson. Uh, to communicate, no, to woo women. To woo women. Uh, maybe that's why he doesn't know the answer. <laughs> um, uh, what's the change? Oh no, we haven't. We've never done this before. Best specific Halloween costume. Is this one that you came up with again? No, I can't remember. I've got here. Um, key, final Keating costume, but only at a winter party because you'll be very cold. Sorry, you'll be very, very warm. Very obviously Neil as Puck. I, I was going to say Neil as Puck just in his, just in his um, trousers, but that might be a bit dark. If you went as Neil as Puck, would people know? No. They would just say you're a fairy. And then, well, oh... Yeah, that you doesn't matter because you haven't brought that into your theory head. yet. You haven't brought that into your theory yet that the character of Puck is a is a is a fairy. Yeah, he's a fairy. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, Neil wasn't for this world. Oh, I don't. We, let's not romanticize it. <laughs> uh, and I also have just Keating's general suit, but also, none of these things are good costumes. This is a bad bad right, film. Neil's Puck is the best one. Neil's Puck is the best one, but they just think you're being a fairy. Oh, Dalton with his... Oh, good outfit. That's why you're here. I couldn't yeah. do that personally. No, you know, it would be very... Yes, it would be things very... in the way. Indeed. Uh, a few fun facts. I haven't got many. At the premiere, Kurtwood Smith uh, saw a family with the father domineering his son, very much like his own character in the film. After the film, Smith noticed the family leaving and saw that the father was crying. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I feel like Kurt Smith is actually, he would actually be a very nice person. Kurt Smith is clearly a very nice person. You know, that 70s show. You love that 70s show. How I does do this, love that 70s how, show. Is this is this a bizarre film for you? Are you like, no, don't be mean? I mean, he is mean as as the as red. But this yeah, is a I different know. level of mean. This is true. And of course, the great is great performance in Robocop. My favourite Robin Williams film is Robots. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's another Kurtwood Smith movie and Keith is of a movie, A Time to Kill. They play the uh, they play the KKK. You would not like him in that. <laughs> Weirdly enough, he's more he's more evil in this. No. Uh, what's the change? I've got a couple. I don't know if it is a change because it is funny and it is nice and it's only once, but is Keating doing the whole Brando and John Wayne impressions just a little bit too... Robin peeking through. Yeah, but I suppose we don't know. You know, Keaton also was part of the Dead Poets Society when he was younger. We don't know what he's actually like as a person. We only ever see him through the lens of being a teacher. No, I know, but it's the whole, it's the Robin Williams thing of, oh, I'm going to do all the impressions. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, who's the guy playing bagpipes on the dock every morning? That is a terrible job. Who is that I, guy? Can you imagine waking up to that? Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Oh, I've got to go get my pipes out. Um, got to get my pipes out. <laughs> is the blanket poem too good to be off the cuff? Oh, or, are we to, or are we to believe that that is something he's played around with before? I think it, it, the whole point is that Todd is very talented. Yeah. But is too unconfident. Too... Which, which is probably why we shouldn't have so much time with Knox and Chris and should have 20 minutes more of Todd. I want more Todd. Todd's like my favourite character in this. Yeah. Um, how does the phone ring in the assembly prank? I've never thought about that. Yeah, sorry. This is why I'm here, to make everything boring. Um, Keating getting personals. Oh, Keating getting his personals halfway through a lesson. There's no way that would be allowed. There would definitely be, he would be like in the middle of the night or in the afternoon or in the morning. 
Uh, who's this random blonde guy with glasses who stands up and gets his whole, own close-up? Annoys me every time. I did think that. I was like, where have you been? He's like... Da, da, dee, dee, dee. And then, obviously, the biggest change is Chris uh, is not kissing Chris whilst asleep. Yeah, that's um, cool. Just bizarre. And then, yeah, dear God, help me. What? What? what what's that supposed to mean? Bad guy, bad guy. Uh, and that's all I have. Tagline rundown. He was their inspiration. He made their lives extraordinary. Very average, very bad. What's a better one? The greatest lesson you'll ever learn. No, that's pretty bad too. They're all awful. Unless you did like meet one of the great poets of our time, John Keating. Just don't have a tagline. I don't think every film needs a tagline. You know, I think we need uh, to get away from uh, taglines. I can give you. I can give you that. I can give you that. But also, when I'm researching for the show and I'm looking for taglines and I can't find any, it annoys me. But yeah, that's because you have a whole section on on here. About it's not it. a whole section. We're not devoting ten minutes to it. What about? Is it is it weird that he's named Keating? I've always I've always thought this. Like, why is he named? Why is he named one of the great poets? Also, At least isn't it, like isn't it John, But isn't it John Keats? It's John Keats. No, his the poem. Yeah, it's John Keats. Right. This is so stupid. I've always thought this. Why is he called John Keating? It's close, but not too close. It's far too close. At least his name's not Spear Shape. Byron. Or... <laughs> Hello, Byron my name is Stein. Shelley Byron. Byron. Stein. You know what? Byron. It should have been Byron Stein. <laughs> oh, Byron Stein. Well, no, Byron it's actually... It's act uh, Katrina, it's actually Byron Stein's creature. <laughs> Tom's big question. Byron Stein. Byron Stein. <laughs> um... Uh, it's always very funny. Uh, it's always a big question. How do prep schools work? Because there are like children there, but there are also people like everybody. So, and... a lot of boarding schools, even in this country, take boarders from the age of six to the age of 18. They just are in different houses in different sections. Right. Mm. So, they have housemasters. Mm. How do you think you would have fared? Boarding school. I was obsessed with boarding school. I really wanted to go to boarding school. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I read, how do you think, uh, how do you think I'd have fared? I read, I read, I read so much Enid Blyton and you would have been bullied. I would not have been bullied. I'd have had, I was bullied more at real high school than I would have been at, at prep school. I'd have been the, 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 oh yeah, Tom. I don't know. No. No. I'd have never met I'd you. I'd have bullied as well. I'd have never met you. Life would be so much better. <laughs> I'd, I'd have never met, um, what's his name? Oh, yeah, Will. The Legacy. Yeah, I'd have never met, well, um, what have we got? Uh, thigh Man. Yeah. Why is, so he's called in the yearbook Thigh Man. And everyone's like, oh, it must have been a Hellraiser. How the hell does that get into the yearbook? Did nobody check the yearbooks in 1950 or whatever? He lost a thigh. Well, don't we all? But, like, how does that get into... I've never looked at someone and gone, mm, thigh. Thighs. No, wait, thighs can be, like, I guess it's the... Mm, I guess it's like lingerie. It's like human lingerie. It's not the actual thing that's attractive. It's the, is it, what, it's is the it promise of them. Zone? Yeah, it's an erogenous zone. Um, I don't like the way you said that. I don't like this conversation at all. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Owing to the huge uh, popularity of the film, there was a short movie sequel planned with Todd Anderson following the footsteps of his mentor. The movie was cancelled due to the unavailability of the original cast. Thank God. Set in the 80s, probably, as well. Or would it have been the 90s? No, it would have been the 80s, wouldn't it? It would have been a teacher in the 80s. Yeah, this is 60s. It's set in the 60s, wasn't it? I've always thought late 50s. I don't know. Let's get a date. I always thought it looked 50s to me. Yeah, 1989. No, I'm kidding. Uh, 1959. Oh, so late 50s, yeah. The film won the BAFTA for best film. Good choice. 
Uh, what we got here? All right, let's talk about this photo. So there's the photo of Keating's. Uh, I'll call her his his woman because we don't know what he is. I know that sounds that's like sexist and curl his wife territory. But is she dead? Is she his wife? All we know is is Neil going. She's pretty, and Keating saying she's in London. What's the deal? Divorced. You think divorced? Then why is he writing a letter to her, or is it therapy? Separated. Died, divorced, murdered. Maybe she's buried in London. <laughs> oh, how much sadder would this film have? I mean, obviously the answer is lots. If there was a, would it have been better with a scene of of? Um, well, actually, Todd, she's dead. I don't. I think I don't think he'd have told Todd that. No. I think they're in love with a woman in, in London. Maybe oh. she's married. Oh. Um, so. Maybe he's a trans woman and they can't be together. Yes. I guess. Yes. You're, you. Yes. You've put me I'm in a, positions. I, the I Don't we all? Um. Are they expelled after standing up on the chairs? No, they can't be. You can't expel that many people, surely. No, I've put here, this is might be one of my best Tom's big questions. What happens next? How long do they stand there for? Yeah, who's the first to get down? Who's the and first to who is the first to sit back down? How awkward is it? Maybe it's Todd and he's slumped and he cries. <laughs> Yeah, it might do. It might Maybe do. it's the blonde kid. Yeah, it probably is, because he's like, I don't know why I stood up, but everyone was standing up. I've always loved this. Not everybody stands up. Yeah. I love that it's only like five people. I love that it's not like everybody standing up. More realistic, es to be honest. Especially Cameron. I would murder him. In the script, Cameron was supposed to stand up and the actor said to the director, I don't think Cameron would, which is a good choice on behalf of the actor. Um, but we still hate I Cameron. love when an actor understands their character. You know what I mean? Like when they're like, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do that. And they argue mm. against the director and the, the, the you know, the writing. Mm. Yeah, all right. Yeah. love when an actor does that. Yeah, I mean, for every good example of that, there's... 2700 bad examples um who knows right um that is it for dead poet society i have already... a few i have a few one stars go ahead my favorite part um my son oh my son <laughs> what my son oh my son is re like they're like Wee! Like a cat. All right, read the, what they say. Just read. Like, e. No, I know, but read what they say. Why? That's why what they read? said. No, I know, but that's a title, presumably, not just the... No, that's what they said. <laughs> okay, next one. Very boring, and I would rather die than watch this movie again. Well, that's good. That's tasteful. Um, what else? Um. Give us one to end on. It's just a movie that should be buried under sand because of all the ideas that are shared in the movie are very old and don't represent now. I guess. Uncle yeah. Neil a waste man. <laughs> yeah. If literature dialogue annoys you, this is a straight no. Yeah, yeah, that probably is. Yeah. Literature dialogue, my least favourite type of dialogue. Oh, God. A lot of people uh, calling it boring. Yeah, I get... Well, no, I don't get that, but I can see that being... Well, it, my ex... Yeah, it was boring until he killed himself. Um, Strina, people who don't like this movie are terrible. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, like like what you like. Uh, and they like the, suicide. They do. They wanted Neil to die. And you know what? Also, as we've, illumin as we've illuminated, they hate queer people. Yeah, they do. They do. They do. They do. And you know what? They probably do. Was Keating gay? No. Okay. <laughs> Firm and fast on that one. No. He's in love with that woman. 
Okay, that's fair enough. It's just whether she's in love with him. Aww. He has a framed photo, and this is 1959, so you can't just, like, go on Facebook and print things off. There is a way. There must. How does he get a framed photo of her? She has to give that. Maybe they were engaged. Um, there's all there's lots of theories here. There's lots of theories. Uh, Dead Poets Society, wonderful movie. Um, we'll Promises, watch again. It's a great film. So Promises, Promises, Girl Interrupted, and Forgetting Sarah Marshall. But skip over the bit where he waggles his penis around. Great, great scene. Great scene. Very good scene. I just went from six to midnight. Um, oh, Jonah Hill, what a man. I love everything about Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Forgetting Sarah Marshall is phenomenal. Anyway, love it. I am about to die. Um, Lee, uh, uh, an incredible, incredible film. Uh, Girl Interrupted and Forgetting Sarah Marshall. We've got so much to look forward to. I will see you in four months. Don't smile. That was supposed to be a sad thing. I'm sad. Uh, guess. I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not like we didn't see each other for like 12 months one time. Yes, let's not forget the time that Katrina hated me. Did, would you say you hated me? Or were you just like very... Uh, you exasperated me. I exasperated you because I was deeply depressed. The... Uh... Like, I don't know. Get over it. I don't know. Smile. Be happy. Smile. It's like Lily Allen says. Smile. Did, did she did say smile, didn't she? Yeah. How how does that song go? Oh, is it for a while? Uh, uh, yeah. Then it's just smile. Uh, it's a smile. A smile. <laughs> you know what song is great? It's not fair, and I think you're really mean. I think you're I think really you're mean. 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 I think you're I don't mean. know why we suddenly burst into Lily Allen. Fuck like, you, fuck you very much. Dead we should start the Lily Allen Society. I mean, it's basically the same thing. Probably. So she's still same. alive. She is still alive. Uh, ending very... ending note. Um, if I fancy anyone in this film, it's Dalton. But I imagine in, in 10 years, it'll be Casey. Yeah, it could, it could happen. Sneaks up, and, sneaks up on you, that Keating. Bye-bye. Uh, Double, 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 double